means one place is synonymous to eco-adventure, Northern Mindanao. From its tumultuous rapids to its deep underground caves, it is renowned for the natural thrills it has never failed to provide. The Northern Mindanao region is made up of five provinces, Bukidnon, Lanao del Norte, the island province of Camiguin, Misamis Oriental, and Misamis Occidental. It is a region rich with natural wonders, history, and culture. Its great waterways flow throughout the region, connecting the provinces by land and by water. In its rich past, these historic waterways played many a role in the history and culture of the people of northern Mindanao. Today, the rivers and straits of the region are in part what make northern Mindanao an eco-adventurer's paradise. Misamis Occidental is where I begin my fateful journey. The Misamis province is at the westernmost part of the region and is connected to Zamboanga del Norte province. Not failing its neighbors, it offers adventure and excitement through its grand mountains and rich seas. There is much to see in Misamis. It prides itself as having its very own aquamarine park and Balingao mangrove. These are important especially to a province whose capital is known as the Green City, or Oquieta City. But what if you're not looking for the great adventures? Instead, an excitement of a different kind. Nestled in the southernmost tip of Misamis Occidental, there is a place that has just that. Tangub is known to be the city of colorful lights. As the Christmas symbol's capital of the country, it is one of the most popular destinations during the holidays. On this episode of Travel Guide, get to see the charming city of Tangub. With its flair for theatrics, everyone will surely enjoy. Like a good soldier, I arrived at the domestic airport in Manila three hours earlier than scheduled, making sure I had everything I needed. So I made my list. Let me just check it twice. I got my bag. I got my sack. I have my Christmas shirt. And I have my Christmas songs. So I think I'm pretty much set for my vacation at the uh, Christmas capital of Mindanao. Dangub City is accessible through many ways. Jumping from Manila to Asamis takes about an hour by plane and a whopping 18 hours if you go by sea. Flying is usually the mode of choice. While on the plane, I thought about what awaits me at Dangub City. All I knew about this exciting city was in a brochure I picked up a while back. Yet somehow I felt the city had more to it than what the brochure was saying. As the doors to my destination opened, I felt the humid Mindanao heat waft in. From a distance, the sound of drum beats greeted me to a parade in full ethnic dress. I suppose it would have made for more interesting conversation if I was to say all this was for me, but sadly so, it wasn't. The parade was part of the Osama City's welcoming committee. Osama City was once a Spanish settlement. To this day, remnants of the era remain. As is seen in the Cota de Santiago, an old Spanish fort. Today, the marker is now used as a lighthouse. Though the city may have been around since the Spanish, there was certainly nothing dead about it. The city was very much alive as many people came flying in through the airport. Osamis City is a thriving city and its fair weather make it a strategic point for planes to come. Itching to get there, I made the 20-minute commute from Osamis to Tangu, past the welcome arches, through the forests that surround it, 
lay this enchanting city. Tangub is a small city surrounded by natural barriers. To the north of it are the forests of Mount Malendang, Pangil Bay to the south, Osami City to the east, and to the west is the municipality of Bonifacio. It is home to less than 50,000 people, people who all seem to now crowd at the city's plaza. At the 1st of December, they would be holding one of the year's most awaited celebrations, the Christmas symbols lighting ceremony. Looking around, it seemed Tangub was more than willing to level their mountains for this event. There must have been tons of soil moved about for each of these displays, not to mention the use of kapis shells, bamboo, and of course, yards of Christmas lights. From the grand nativities down to the lanterns, most of the decors here were made by hand and with local materials. Christmas, I thought, must truly be serious business here. With only a few days left to get it all done, I wondered how they would finish all this in time. After walking around the city, I think it's about time I take the shuttle cab. These shuttle cabs go only as fast as 40 kilometers per hour. Enough to fully soak in the sights, but fast enough to make good time. With a quicker ride, I made my way to Pangil Bay. This historic strait once witnessed the arrival of the Moro Muslims in the 13th century and the Spanish in the 16th and 17th century. Today, it is part of the locals' daily commute. Every hour, passengers are ferried to and from its neighbor, Tubod, the capital of Lenao del Norte. The bay is rich with crustaceans, marine finfish, and mollusks. There are many modes of transport around the city. You can either take a shuttle cab or have a tricycle or a pedicab give you a private ride around the city. Come along. My pedicab took me to the Gawad Kalinga Christmas Village, my last stop for the day. All this is what I came here for. Every year in every town, the Tangubanans come to design their masterful works of art. Even little ones here come to participate. You cannot imagine how excited I am to be here. Right behind me is this masterful work by the people of Gawad Kalinga. Let's come and look at some of the details. I made it a mission to spend some of my evening finding more of these dazzling arches. And after a long first day, I was quite ready to turn in. The city hostel where I took up lodging for the remainder of my stay was a quaint inn near the plaza. It offers dormitory type rooms and for a fair price, these rooms could be rented out completely. There is a communal room and a veranda to give you a wonderful view of the sunrise. 